without any police or any indications. I move to reopen court. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, it's already given the speech. Our, our, uh, our invitation today will be given by Commissioner Cantrell. Judge, the commissioners are <coughs> pastor this morning. Uh, called and said they had a death in the family of the church, so she had to be there. And I've asked uh, Dr. Thompson to uh, give her invitation. <laughs> Judge, commissioners, let's pray. Our Father, thank you for another day. Lord, in good times and difficult times, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, as we proceed this morning. Grant us wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Lord, thank you for the leadership. Dr. Thompson has shown us during his times of crisis during the rest of our
Whereas we recognize the vital role that technology has in our daily lives, whereby citizens, schools, libraries, businesses, governmental entities, and other organizations that utilize the internet for keeping in contact with family and friends, managing personal finances, performing research, enhancing education, and conducting business. And whereas critical sectors are increasingly relying on information systems to support financial services, energy, telecommunication, transportation, utilities, healthcare, and emergency response systems. Whereas technology provides new opportunities for economic growth and a free exchange of information around the world, yet it also provides for the increasing threat of malicious cyber attacks, loss of privacy from spyware and adware, and significant financial and personal privacy losses due to identity theft and fraud. And whereas the month of October is National Cyber Security Awareness Month, which encourages vigilance and protection by all computer users, therefore governmental entities must work closely together to reduce risk and build resilience in their shared critical information and communication infrastructure. And citizens must be proactive and responsible for in the role to secure the cyber networks used every day. And whereas information sharing to provide a collaborative mechanism to help states and local governments enhance cyber security, and Dallas County provides a comprehensive approach to help enhance the security of this level of government. And whereas the Dallas County Information Technology Department will provide a broadcast email each Tuesday and Thursday during the month of October to heighten awareness and educate employees about cybersecurity and host an IT security awareness event for the area local governments. And whereas the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and the National Association of State Information Officers have declared October as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and all citizens are encouraged to visit these sites and to learn about cybersecurity and put knowledge into practice in their own school, workplace, and businesses. It is therefore ordered the judge to decree that the Dallas County Commission's Court approves and hereby proclaims the month of October 2012 as National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and I so move. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Certainly, we'd like to thank the uh, Commission Cantrell, the judge, and the rest of the Commission's court for the resolution uh, to recognize certain uh, uh, very significant issues, certain the battles that go on today, not necessarily battles with uh, different uh, guns and other weaponry, but certainly the battles over information. And sad to say, it only takes just a little bit of information to be able to both nicely take something very precious to us, a certain kind of names. Uh, so that uh, certainly ask that everybody if they will continue to be one aware of uh, typically your information, certainly protect it to the you possibly can, as well as to uh, to uh, to just to, uh, uh, certainly uh, participate in those other events to take to safeguard your information to the possibly can, so that, that way uh, you don't have to typically have somebody else to come to you. Uh, so certainly thank you to the court for the actual resolution. Thank you. And our last resolution today is from Commissioner Garcia. Thank you, Judge, colleagues, members of the audience. It's a pleasure for me to read this resolution today to a fantastic group, a dynamic group of people. So I'm going to ask Ms. Mary Terry of Ignite Texas and IPV. She, I also see Hannah and Sarah and the delegation. Could you come forward to the podium so I can read this resolution? They're not strangers to this court. Um, Colleagues, uh, as you remember, a few months ago, we have a group of uh, Irma Rankin students, which are part of the program, uh, a terrific leadership program for young girls. So anyway, uh, the resolution reads as follows. Whereas the United, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution in 2011 is to establish October 11 as the International Day of the Girl Child. And it was co-sponsored by the United States and 97 other countries. And whereas the purpose of this day is to help galvanize worldwide enthusiasm for goals to better their lives, providing an opportunity for them to show leadership and reach their full potential. And whereas equality and universal access to education for every girl and boy are among the United States Millennium Development Goals supported by 189 countries, including the United States. And whereas the Day of the Girl campaign calls from communities across the globe to recognize that girls worldwide face many injustices, such as discrimination, gender stereotypes, child marriage, and lack of education, and empowers girls to fight for their rights. 
in a unified way. Whereas the Dallas County Commissioner's Courts asked the citizens of Dallas County and other organizations to join them in supporting increasing girls participation in sports, science and math, increasing high school graduation rates, and providing equal opportunities for all girls by speaking out against gender-based injustices, celebrating all girls' potential, and encouraging all girls to pursue their dreams. Now, therefore, we resolve that the request of Ignite Texas students at Irma Rangel Young Women Leadership School of Dallas, the, county, the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does officially proclaim October 11, 2012, as the day of the girl in Dallas County, Texas. And I submit. And I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Ms. Terry, would you like to say a few words? I don't know if any of the girls. Yes, yes I would. I know they love you. Talk to Thank you, Dr. Garcia and at the Commissioner's Court. We are so uh, privileged to be here and to be recognized as uh, women helping women uh, to move forward to the education and the opportunities. And I don't want to take too much time because I want you to meet the young women who are about this from Irma Rangel. And so I'm going to let them introduce you, uh, introduce themselves to you and what grade level they're in. My name is Ian Phillips, and I'm a sophomore. All right, Ian. I'm Kathy. My name is Camille Ramirez, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, my name is Lily Ramirez, and I'm also a sophomore. All right, Lily. Good morning. My name is Vivian Taylor Samudio, and I'm honored to serve as the principal of Irma Ron Hill Women's Leadership School, the first public all girls school in the state of Texas. And we would like to thank Dr. Alva Garcia and the Commission's Court for the resolution this morning. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Anna Alexander. <coughs> I am the night teacher at Emma on Hill, and I also work at the school as a student community advocate. I'm really glad that you did pass this resolution because girls around the world are suffering through many different things. And it's important that we recognize that and we are aware of that. Right. So I really appreciate you passing this resolution. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I'm the program director for Ignite. Good morning. I'm Becky Gregory. I'm an attorney in Dallas. I'm on the board of Ignite. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Dr. Garcia, for presenting this. We appreciate it.
I, I think the young ladies will see when you look at Dallas County and the diversity, uh, you'll, you'll see everything from directors of, of a number of departments, and I think Dallas County represents that kind of diversity. <coughs> uh, I want to say, um, point of personal privilege, uh, uh, this morning, I know this court wants to join me and the uh, Dallas County um, Juvenile Board and wishing our director, uh, Dr. Terry Smith, a happy birthday. Any opposed? 
policy. And I just thank you for basically operating according to this particular policy and treating uh, the uh, security data that typically get uh, the county. I mean, it was Jackson, depending on and, uh, the actual information that typically gets contained inside of the system. Yes, this man. And more importantly, that this information will be secure and backup data. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Well, so certainly, we have a process of integrity on the backup the information in the systems, uh, uh, not only on a weekly basis, but still as a full backup, but we also take that incremental backups as well, so make sure you can recover the system to the <coughs> state in case there typically is some, uh, somewhat uh, of a uh, catastrophic issue. Uh, the issue is that we can, the applications we can typically pull back out of the shelf, uh, systems hardware, we can generally replace without too much difficulty. But once the data is basically gone, uh, typically if you don't have it backed up, then you typically are, uh, you have major difficulties. So we want to do whatever we can to make sure our data is not only uh, protected, but obviously able you know, to recover the system from the state so the end users can use it. Yes, uh -huh. I want to thank you for you know putting this process uh, together and for you know putting those comments because I believe that it's important that people know that they can use their opinion and still address them. Thank you for working on some of our <coughs> computer problems in Durham Bridge Four. We're still having some problems with some emails, but hopefully with your staff will be able to solve them. Yes, ma'am. I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think that they were able to revoke the right to resolve those particular items. I think relatively expeditious is once we are aware of them. But we have a great group of folks in the information technology department, so they don't take any of the credit and stuff for them. I just kind of stay out of their way when they do Thank you, man. <coughs> you don't get any time, but don't worry about that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Mark. 2B recommends the approval of the purpose of power installation service and from general data to take out of Two C that code was on the formal agenda. Three commissions code administration has update on the strike policy. Commission. The, the, up, the update was the fact that uh, logistically uh, the whole issue of the shredded paper uh, was causing us. The, the vendor had provided us probably 150 beans, and uh, logistically from just a, just a transportation. It, it doesn't make sense not to put the shredded paper in in bags. Uh, we were going that he said he had exhausted all of his inventory, and therefore we needed to purchase in order to you know maintain another 100 beans. Uh, Contact with purchasing in regards to that. It, it just doesn't make logistical sense, and the fact that we got to transport those beans. And so I, I did talk to the uh, commissioner. Can't trade out with regards to that. Uh, this, this is shredded paper, and the difference is we can carry uh, at least twice as much uh, from a logistical standpoint in bags as opposed to beans. That's, that's correct. I've had an opportunity to look at the operation and see how that's working, especially with the trailers. And given the fact that the beans were shredded, documents, shredded documents in it are unlocked. Uh, you know, I, I don't see a problem. Business process-wise, it's certainly going to be a, a better process to put that in bags for the transport. So, you know, I, I wouldn't have a problem in uh, changing that policy to include a bag or shredded. If it's cross-shredded, cross-shredded, correct. Yes, it has to be cross-shredded. And, and Don has made sure all of our departments have brushed that shreds in the department that do the shreds. So. Could these bags be secured? Plastic bags. Oh, uh, yeah, they're plastic bags. And, uh, they'll be in the same area that the, uh, the lock bins will be in. So. Really? Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not answering my question. A plastic bag, like I use for my garbage, is easy to punch a hole for it. Sure. Well, the Swimming Lion Commission, these, these, these were unlocked bins for our shredding. So Daryl made me a, uh, uh, I was not aware of the, of the proposed change, but Daryl made me aware of that. And I checked with the American Shredding and also the security uh, experts, and it, it poses no, uh, no additional security risk to use plastic bags. It just uh, saves us. You know, money and makes makes uh, able to shove more plastic bags into 
um, secure trade. And this is only for shredded material, nothing else. Would this be, uh, would this be secure material in the plastic bags? No, it's well, it's shredded, but shredded. It's, shredded. Yeah, it's, it's in the siphon, and then it would be placed in the trailer, and it would be locked down because it, it, it's going to be transported along with those lock things. And what about the permit shredded? The people that shred the tool that they That's the individual department of the department that have the access to that information. They shred it, they put it in a plastic bag, they tie it up, so it would be. Uh, New service people come in, they'll bring out the locked bins and then the shredded bag and put them into the trailer. So, mm -hmm. will, so the community service people would not see any of the material. That's correct. That are but it would be shredded. That's correct. Right. That's correct. And can, we, can we guarantee that this, this will happen that the community service people will not be in the process? They, of won't, they the won't shred any material. You can guarantee that. They won't shred any material. They're picking up. They're just picking up. Correct. In the plastic bags. Instead of picking them up in an envelope. Yeah. Right, right. So, that's the only reason I can think, and maybe other reasons, but that's the only reason I can think of if somebody would get into either of those is if, let's say they're having a birthday party and somebody wants to you know, use that as confetti or, or something of that nature because we didn't feel like it was a security risk in the unlocked bins. We didn't lock those bins. Um, the bins are still locked for anything that is not shredded. Right. And the change here is instead of going into an unlocked bin, it will go into an unlocked but tagged plastic bag. Right. And that will just help us in movement and storage. Let me say that the court is, that I only have one board vote, and if the court is agreeable to this, uh, I accept that. But I, I still would just like on the record to say that there needs to be a sentence there that says community service shall, shall not have any contact with secure documents. That's in policy. I'm probably there. That's in policy. Okay. Okay. Item 4, budget. 4-H common trial training request. And for me, that quote was on the formal agenda and we it back. There are no questions on the line, so that we have one speaker listed. All right, I'll be able to read the rules before for our speaker. All commissioners, court attendees are hereby advised that this meeting is conducted in accordance with the provisions of the Dallas County Code, section 74 71. Visitors and registered speakers are to preserve order and decorum at all times. Personal, profane, or slanderous remarks are not appropriate and will not be allowed at any time during the public meeting. Any and all applause will be kept brief and observance of behind constraints. Disruptive visitors and or registered speakers may be removed and are subject to facilities provided in the state of Texas Penal Code section 38.13, 42.01, and 42.05. Registered individual speakers are limited to a maximum of three minutes. A maximum discussion on any one topic is limited to 30 minutes. All right, and our only speaker today is Mr. Sandra Crenshaw. Mr. Sandra Crenshaw here today. Sandra Crenshaw, Sandra Crenshaw. Uh, I've seen the Ms. Crenshaw that includes our, our, our public speakers. We have a, a briefing session uh, uh, today. Uh, I'm sorry, we have a, a, a brief agenda, a moderate agenda that we're going to be a part of uh, in our uh, closed session. So uh, we should return not too long. Uh, the court is now uh, reconvening the public session of recess for its closed session is authorized by Chapter 5 of the Government Code. Any answer is open to closed session for placing the session.